Hi, this video is about cells of the immune system. In my earlier video, I have compared uh, the immune system of our body to the defense system of our country. So if you haven't watched this video, please watch this video for better convenience. Now question is, from where does the immune cells of our body arise? It turns out that all the immune cells, most of them are produced from the bone marrow and bone marrow is found in big bones like one depicted here. So inside the bone there would be bone marrow and in the bone marrow there are two niche. One is vascular niche, one is industrial niche and mostly industrial niche comprises of the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell. Now hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell give rise to myeloid progenitor or lymphoid progenitor. From the myeloid progenitor, all the part of the innate immune system arises, such as macrophages, such as neutrophil, basophil, mast cell, etc. And et now, from the lymphoid progenitor, all the adaptive part of the immune system appears. For example, T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and natural killer cells. Now, first we would look at the components of the innate part of the immune system and then we would move to look at the adaptive part. So one of the important player of the innate immune system is the macrophage. Macrophages are like patrolling police. But first let's look at where does macrophages come from. Macrophages come from hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell and thereby it actually differentiate into myeloid progenitor and ultimately give rise to monocytes. Monocytes enter the bloodstream, circulate in the bloodstream and once they enter the tissue space, they become macrophages. Now macrophages are mono and monocytes are the same, but ma monocytes are circulating in the blood vessels, whereas macrophages are resident in the tissue and they are patrolling around the border of the skin or any other epithelial lining like that. So that's why I want to describe macrophages at, as patrolling police officer. So whenever a pathogen is entering our body, like here a nail is pricking our skin and with the rusty nail there are pathogens entering our body. So since the macrophages are always patrolling our, down the sc skin, it can recognize the pathogen. Macrophage can recognize the pathogen and it can kill the pathogen. The one of the way it, it uses to kill the pathogen is by using reactive oxygen species. Other way, it engulfs the pathogen and kill it by lysozymes. Also, a second type of cell, which is a part of both kind of adaptive and innate immune system, it sort of work like a bridging cell. It's known as dendritic cell. Now, dendritic cells get their name from dendrite-like projections. So, they are not neurons. They don't have dendrites, but they have projections which are very similar to dendrites. So that's why they are known as dendritic cell. Dendritic cells are also antigen presenting cells. They're also compared like a patrolling police officer like macrophages. They also hover around near the boundaries of the skin in our respiratory epithelia, etc, etc. Now whenever a pathogen enters, dendritic cell can engulf the pathogen and it can first take some measure to destroy the pathogen and also it can alarm the adaptive part of the immune system, the reserve part of the immune system to take further actions. Now I would introduce you to cytotoxic T cells. Now T cells are of two types. So they are like reserved armies and specialized armies. For example, cytotoxic T cells are specialized killer R forces. So they would recognize which cell is infected. So generally what happens, they, they give rise to immunity against virus infected cell. Now a virus infected cell would display some of the viral proteins on its surface by class 1 MHC. Now cytotoxic CDA T cell can recognize that viral particle on the class 1 MHC and thereby it can secrete granzymes and perforins which are which which can ultimately give rise to uh, activation of caspase 3 and thereby apoptosis of the target cell thereby it kills its 
target cell or affected cell in the system. Now other cell is known as CD8 positive helper T cell. Now helper T cell are reserve bench of army. So they are ready to combat but they don't generally combat directly. So what does they do? They work like helpers. So they help other cells for example B cells to get activated. So T helper cells help B cell to get activated and take the further action. Now B cells are another division of army. For example think that if CD8 positive T cells are land forces and imagine B cells as navy. So B cells has developed from the bone marrow. From the bone marrow an immature B cell goes to the lymph node. Now lymph node are like base camp for B cells also T cells. Now in lymph node they reside they are ready to combat and in the lymph node they also interact with other patrolling police officers that means the macrophages and the dendrites to understand what kind of pathogen has invaded our body. So there are specific zones for B cell. In the lymph node there is zone like lymphoid follicle where B cells uh, reside. Also the B cell once encounter a pathogen they rapidly proliferate and form the germ centered germinal center in the uh, lymph node. Now once B cell is activated it undergoes affinity maturation and antibody class switching to produce one type of antibody in large amount and the B cell get differentiated into a antibody secreting plasma cell. Now plasma cell is the main activated killer part of the B cell. Also I would talk about natural killer cell. Natural killer cell is also of lymphoid origin and natural killer cells are spec ops. They are like lethal killers of the immune system. So they don't differentiate between anything. So anything in their way they would kill. So what happens in this situation? Let's say our cell is infected by a virus. Now definitely our immune system has a antiviral mechanism of action which is by CD8 positive T cell. Sometimes the virus is so cunning that it don't allow the cell to display viral peptide onto a class 1 MHC. Now once the cell cannot display the viral peptides on class 1 MHC, CD8 positive T cell would think everything is under control and everything is okay. But the NK cells are different. NK cells go to cell to cell and scan for class 1 MHC. Anywhere it would see the class 1 MHC molecules are not there or the peptides displays on the class 1 molecules are not there. It would think there is something wrong and it would destroy the cell by secreting porphyrin and granzymes. So NK cells are pretty clever and cunning. Other cells which are of uh, myeloid lineages like eosinophil, mast cells, basophil, neutrophil, all these things are also important component of the immune system because all of these are important for allergic responses. So they are mainly the mediators of inflammatory responses. Definitely they help to modulate the adaptive immune response and also they are involved in allergic responses. So what happens, mast cell and basophil has antibody receptors on their surface known as FC receptor. Now FC receptor can bind to the FC portion of the antibodies. Now upon, re upon uh, repeated exposure of an allergen here in a green, so you can see the antibodies cross link that and it would make the mast cell and basophil etc to degranulate. So it would degranulate huge amount of histamine or other inflammatory mediators including prostaglandin, leukotriene etc and etc and that would create a lot of uh, changes in the body including vasodilation, bronchial constriction, smooth muscle contraction etc and etc. So these cells are mostly uh, important for allergic responses. Now we have quite a lot of looked at 
what are the cell types present in the immune system how they are compared to a division of uh, armies in a country now we should think about that all the armies for example air forces land forces and navy are well connected by specific communication system so how does our immune system communicate with each other it turns out that immune system has different strategies to communicate with each other either they migrate from one place to another place to direct contact with the another cell for example a macrophage once encounter a pathogen at the at the periphery of the uh, body that means underneath the skin it would migrate towards the lymph node that means the base camp of the uh, t cell or b cell and it would interact with them it would activate them to become a uh, to 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 combat the situation now so the one kind of direct um one kind of direct mode of activation or mode of communication is receptor based interaction receptor based interaction give rise to specific signaling which would convey the message message of uh, the pathogen invasion or which would tell the for this uh, this immune component cell to get activated other ways of communication is kind of wireless communication or radio based communication used by the armies which are cytokines so macrophages or many other cells of the immune system secrete cytokines so cytokines are chemical messengers cytokines uh, would bind to the cytokine receptor on the target cell and create a lot of signaling signaling pathways which would ultimately give rise to several downstream effects for example cytokine really inflammatory cytokines namely interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 released by the macrophage would attract even more macrophages towards the sort of the site of uh, invasion as if the macrophage is asking for backup for from its unit to come to the place and combat more pathogen so this is how uh, this is a brief idea about how the immune system communicate with each other for all these parts and all these cells i have separate detailed videos so you can watch those and get a detailed idea about how each of these component or each of these divisions of the immune system work so that kind of concludes my video on this topic if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you